as you guys know, since the beginning of the pandemic, it's been my belief that mandates only further divide and politicize our state and our country. And I've said that many times. And I believe when Georgians are given all the information, they should be free to make the right decision for themselves and for their families to protect not only their lives, but also their livelihoods. And Georgians have stepped up to the plate and have been part of the solution in getting past the worst of this virus. They didn't do that because of any government mandate. They did it because they wanted to protect their families and their communities, and they wanted to get back to normal. Today we are here because President Biden and his administration want to invade the personal lives of thousands of Georgians, burdening hundreds of businesses of all sizes and endangering countless jobs. Last Friday, my administration, along with Attorney General Chris Carr, Commissioner Gary Black, our Agriculture Commissioner in the University System of Georgia, and other states filed a lawsuit against President Biden and his administration. This lawsuit is in response to the Biden administration's unlawful, dangerous overreach through COVID-19 vaccine mandate on all federal contractors. In Georgia, this mandate could affect thousands of people. After telling Americans in July of 2021 that it was not the role of the federal government to mandate COVID-19 vaccine, the Biden administration is now forcing hardworking Georgians to choose between their livelihoods and a vaccine. Just a few of the consequences of this mandate include pivotal university research projects being put on hold or abandoned, locally owned construction companies that help serve our military installations around the state being forced to stop work mid-project. And you'll hear from Commissioner Black soon about how this could impact our critical food service industries. These examples literally only scratch the surface, and we will not stand for this outrageous big government power grab. As we all know, inflation is skyrocketing in our country. Supply chains have come to a screeching halt, and businesses literally of all sizes and in all parts of our state and around the country are looking for more workers. This Joe Biden mandate is a recipe for financial disaster. For businesses who do work with the federal government, this executive action makes it more likely you could lose employees to other competitors. Even if you can keep the workers you have, Congratulations, Joe Biden has now made you into the vaccine police. For hardworking Georgians out there who work for a federal contractor and have chosen, for whatever reason, not to get vaccinated, Joe Biden now wants you to lose your job. That's why we're here today. In Georgia, we want business owners to create more jobs, encourage more investment, and continue Georgia's record-breaking economic momentum. We want to protect the livelihoods of our citizens who are literally just trying to make ends meet in this historic time that we have been through. Attorney General Carr, Commissioner Black, and I are all in this fight to put Georgians first, and we look forward to having our day in court. With that, I'm going to turn it over to our Attorney General, Chris Carr. General. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everybody. We are here today because the President of the United States has overstepped his authority. This lawsuit is not about vaccinations. I am pro-vaccination. I'm vaccinated myself. I strongly encourage my fellow Georgians to consult with their doctors and make the best decision for themselves and their family. This lawsuit is about whether a President has the authority to effectively run a state agency by manipulating his contracting power. He does not. At the Department of Law, our job is clear. That is to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States and protect the interests of the people of Georgia. This includes protecting our citizens from the unlawful actions of the federal government. Established within our Constitution is a system of checks and balances, a system that affords states the liberty to choose what works best for their citizens. The president, purportedly in the name of public health, has circumvented this system to impose a blanket mandate 
that tramples on these very rights. On September 9th, President Biden issued an executive order that requires all federal contractors be fully vaccinated by December the 8th or risk possible termination. In addition to being unlawful, this mandate places immense burdens on our employers, meaning those who do not enforce this unlawful policy face losing billions of dollars in federal funding, federal funding that they would otherwise be eligible for. This executive order, though billed as a federal contractor mandate, is actually far reaching and impacts employers here in Georgia that receive certain federal funding, including state employees at several institutions within our university system and at the Department of Agriculture. This is an unprecedented and unconstitutional use of power by a president, and we have filed suit to stop this unlawful mandate before our state and its economy suffer irreparable harm and hardship. This action is nothing more than a short-sighted attempt by the Biden administration to force us to comply with a one-size-fits-most approach. The Biden administration would rather force us to choose between two equally problematic outcomes, either employing only Georgians who comply with their unlawful vaccine mandate and terminate those who refuse, or have those same Georgians lose billions of federal dollars for critical research. That is unacceptable and will not lead to more vaccinations, but rather greater upheaval. With an already tight labor market, the loss of employees as we enter the holiday season will greatly disrupt the stability and reliability of our workforce here in Georgia. This despite the Biden administration's claim that the mandate is meant to improve economy and efficiency, a false narrative that has served as the very foundation for the issuance of the executive order in the first place. So let me say this again. This lawsuit is not about the benefits of the COVID-19 vaccine. This lawsuit is based solely on the rule of law. The president does not have the authority to infringe upon state and individual rights. Any requirement that employees within our state be vaccinated is a power delegated to us by the U.S. Constitution. Nowhere in our founding documents is the federal government granted the authority to impose this type of widespread public health policy, and any attempt to do so is in direct violation of our state's sovereignty. This mandate is unconstitutional and, as such, should be deemed unenforceable. We look forward to our day in court as we seek justice for our state and our fellow citizens. And I'll now turn it over to Commissioner Gary Black. Thank you, Governor. And thank you, Attorney General Carr, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are part of this lawsuit uh, as representing the Department of Agriculture because we have shared space. We have shared facilities with the Board of Regents. That's a critical issue for our employees. It's a critical issue because I do not believe it is, it is our job to be, as has been stated, the vaccine police. Uh, but this goes much further than that. The potential implications for the state of Georgia, for our food system, uh, there are enormous. If there's anything that we lear have learned during COVID is that uh, I hope one of the, you know, the positive lessons that we've learned is that with the critical infrastructure with respect to our food system and the importance of agriculture uh, to our nation's security, it, it is, it's paramount. We've seen this. We've seen empty shelves. We've seen uh, the things that we did not ever think we'd see in America or Georgia, but they, they came a part of this through this, this chaos. Uh, what we've also, uh, what, what we're, we're looking at through cooperative agreements which we have with the Environmental Protection Agency, with the Food and Drug Administration, and with the U.S. Department of Agriculture that helps us perform our work. I think Georgians want their meat inspected. I think Georgians expect for their food to be safe. But in order to do so, we may have, must have the proper team on the, on the field every day to protect uh, our citizens. Uh, that is in jeopardy. We are, we are, uh, these are some looming issues that could be, become a part of this. Uh, but it's important to address them uh, now so that it, all, all your viewers understand the ramifications because uh, I, am, uh, I, 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 I firmly believe that uh, uh, 
communication from the federal government that said it isn't our intent to do this. It must be addressed now. We need clarity. We need to know whether is food inspection going to be interrupted by a presidential executive order? Is meat inspection going to be interrupted? That, those questions, we need those questions now. Uh, but it goes much further now. We have uh, in, our, in our farming communities in the state of Georgia where there's a significant grassroots involvement at the local level for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. There are locally elected committees of farmers that have interaction with the federal government who themselves through this action have been told can no longer serve on, the, on those local committees unless we turn to a what seems a, a, a very uh, desperate attempt and in my, my view almost a, a, a look into World War, time, World War II times of saying please show me your papers. Please show me your papers to enter. And that's something I just I firmly object to. I'm, I'm I thank for the governor for his leadership. I thank the attorney general for his leadership. We're pleased to be a part of this suit. We believe that justice will prevail, the rule of law will prevail, and when we do so, Georgia's economy will be stable. The ladies like I spoke to last night in middle Georgia who are desperate with their families worried, worried about whether those defense jobs are going to be impacted, worried about whether uh, simply because they're making a, a, a health care decision on behalf of their family is unconscionable. Uh, so Governor, Attorney General, thank you for the opportunity to be here, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have to take questions, I suppose. Yeah. Mr. Black, um, are your, are your employees in your department subject to the federal contractor vaccine mandate? And if so, are you taking steps to have them vaccinated now, even though this lawsuit is going on? If I understand the question, Robert, because your, 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 your mask state is state hurting state. me, so thank, thank you. Thank direct employees of the State Department of Agriculture. Yes. Are they subject to the federal contractor vaccine mandate? They, they very well could be. And that, that is something that we're seeking clarity on right now. We have. Uh, there is in we have no intention we've had mixed signals we said first they're going to be affecting those employees secondly it could be affecting licensed establishments <clears throat> but then we have uh, a, a situation where we say uh, perhaps not uh, it's not our intention we're waiting on final final approval those are the types of, of questions for the impact of the largest part of Georgia's economy. We need those answers now. And as I said, that's not a part of this suit, but it very well could be, and I promise it will be if we don't get clarity from the federal government. Attorney General Clark, we just have a legal question. Um, does the president have the legal authority as the head of the executive branch to order vaccine mandate for federal contractors working in He might have the authority to do it in a limited basis, but he certainly cannot use the federal contracting power to run the state university system of Georgia. That is commandeering what is clearly in the Constitution our authority. So there is absolutely no authority that the president has to use federal contracting power to run our state universities. So that's what we're going to be talking about in court. That's why we think that this is a, a timely issue. We're going to be going quickly. Uh, to see if we can't get the court to enjoin uh, this overly broad and unconstitutional power grab, because that is absolutely not what our constitutional our constitution allows him to do. Look, let me just add this, and in, in addition to, you know, forget the legal part of this, just the nightmare that the university systems already had to go through to even figure out how this would affect them, has just disrupted what they're doing every day. And that's the point with the private sector. And this has been going on not with just this lawsuit, but also the, the other rule that's going to be coming out that we'll take action on as well. I mean, you've had thousands of businesses having to try to figure out how this is. It's not even implemented yet. Many of them don't even know that. He's just scared them and browbeat them into, you know, worry and having to spend time on things that they simply, they, they already don't have enough people to keep up with the supply chain to look for new employees, to implement the other practices that they have. Uh, so it is a nightmare for those people. And on the flip side of that, you have other businesses which we've allowed in Georgia to do as they please because we feel like these businesses can figure out how to deal with their employees and their customers better than the federal government and the state government, by the way. And they have 
vaccination rates that are off the charts. So, I mean, you're punishing those people that have already done a lot of what he thinks businesses should do. I don't necessarily disagree with that way of thinking, but look, it's their decision to do that, and we're letting them do that. But to mandate that on everybody, especially companies that don't have resources, especially if, you know, Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 companies for small business people like myself, it is a nightmare. And we hear this, I hear this literally multiple, multiple times a day, every day from people all over the state in any sector you can imagine. Governor Kemp, do you agree with the university system that to go ahead and comply with the mandate even while this lawsuit is pending? Well, that would be a question you'd have to ask them. You know, the constitutional makeup of the Board of Regents. I can just tell you that they are part of this lawsuit because they know what a disaster this is. All right. Well, thank you all.